Today I'm looking into recreating the Australian Road Cycling Championships loop for 2018 here indoors. One of the features of an interactive indoor smart trainer that a lot of people want to try when they first get one is to re-ride their favourite route from outside, inside. Today what I'm looking into is pairing up my Wahoo Kicker. I've got the elements today, I'm going to use the element bolt. I'm pairing the element bolt up to the Wahoo Kicker to recreate a route that I rode a couple of weeks back. The route that I'm recreating indoors is the 2018 National Road Cycling Championship course here in Ballarat. It has a fair solid hill at the start, some rollers and a nice downhill finish. So it's gonna be a good test of the trainer and how it's gonna simulate that. Now this is not erg mode, which is brilliant. It's sim mode, so it simulates the hills. You can ride this course as hard or as easy as you want to become familiar with the gradient changes, just like out in the real world. Today I'm going to try three different ways of recreating the route indoors. First of all, I'm just going to recreate it from an activity that I've already done. The ride that I did two weeks ago is already stored on here. I'm just going to pair the kicker and hit go on that activity. We'll recreate the route that way. Secondly, I've created the route in Strava. And I've synced that route to the unit. And the third option today that I'll use is Komoot. Very similar to Strava and creating the route that way manually online, but Komoot has turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which syncs through to this unit and actually pops up as you ride indoors. Okay, let's get the kicker paired to this unit. We've got three laps of this course coming up. First up, we'll add the kicker sensor. There we go. Save the sensor, we'll turn our location to indoors. We click on routes, create from history. We scroll through the route that we want to recreate. I've called this one Oz Nationals IRL in real life. Here's the loop. We'll create that there. Give it a few seconds. And there we have it, a route that we can select on here that's also synced over to here. So if we go to page, page, route, we can select the route from there and rewrite it. And you can see there the Komoot route and the Strava route have already synced. After I created them on the websites, they sync down straight away because I've done the sync from the web pairing here for Strava. Rider GPS is also there and Komoot. Best bike split is there as well. But they're already there on the system ready to go. So first of all, we'll ride the IRL route in real life recorded on this unit here. Then we'll load the Strava route and ride that. And then we'll load the commute route, which has the turn-by-turn -turn navigations. Okay, time to get up, let's ride. Okay, I'll quickly fast forward through these. Here is the route followed with the IRL loops, the actual recorded loop on the head unit. Next up, we have the route that I created with Strava. And finally, we have the Komoot route, which actually has the turn-by-turn -turn navigations right in there. We'll have a close look at those in just a moment. Three course simulations done there this afternoon, that was a solid workout. All three were very similar, but they weren't the same. I've broken the course down on DC Rainmaker's analysis tool. Let's have a look at that now. 
What I've got here is a side-by-side -side of the three elevation profiles, one from in real life and one that I sync. So these two here are one and the same. You can see there, kicks up out of town with the first climb, bit of a deflection point there, around the corner, up the KOM, a few descents across the top, a little bit of undulation, a few descents again, and the fast run into town. That's the in real life actual file captured. Quite a few elevation changes there. The Strava created route here is a little smoother. Still similar deflection points there through the feed zone, first left-hander up through the KOM. So very similar. And around the back of the university, it has the little pincher there. And then over to the Kamut generated route, smooth as silk. It really is. You can see there the, the amount of smoothing they've put into play. That's quite significant. So not as many gradient changes with the Kamut route and they kind of miss a few of the finer details. So the course itself overall, very similar, but the fine detail is missing in a few. Well, to be honest, it was missing in almost all of them. The bigger picture, so for the kilometre stretch of the two climbs at the start, there was no gradient change. It stuck to one number and just locked in. Coming around the corner, it dipped down and then back off. So it was very linear, but very digital as well. It was sort of up or down or it just, it really wasn't what I expected, but the overall picture was still there. The hill, across the top, few descents, and a fast run into town. They all simulated that quite well. But the finer details, down to probably the 25 meter mark, the actual course itself has a 10% kick, maybe 11 to 12% kick for a, maybe 20 or 30 meters across the KOM. None of them actually captured that and simulated that indoors. The maximum we had here, look, I'll put up a few numbers here. You can see they're all a little different. I've broken it down into first hill, second, well, second hill, the KOM, and then a few of the descents. So the first hill, we had anywhere between 6 to 6.7% gradient simulation. The KOM, there, they're nowhere near 10 to 11%, which is, we do have a little section of that in real life, so it failed to get that. And the descents, similar, but still not the same across all three. Very interesting stuff. Overall, though, uh, I think the turn-by-turn -turn queues, or the queue navigation with the commute route, they were a bonus, absolutely, because you'd have a certain point in the course that you knew, that I knew, Gear Avenue turn, flying down the turn, hanging a right-hand turn into the university. It had distance markers to go, so you could judge your effort based on that. So I think the commute queues were really, really handy on the bolts to have, and also the overall profile across all three, so you knew exactly where you were on course, and you knew there was a, a big downhill coming up or a slight climb coming up. They were really handy to simulate as well. So it gets you in the mindset of being outdoors where you have to, I guess, visualize the course that you're on if you're trying to simulate it indoors using one of these. I'll put links below to both my Strava route and the Kamut route. So if you have an element you want to download these and try out the ride, go for it. So what I've done today is written a course and recreated the course that I was familiar with. But to take this even further, I could recreate a course anywhere in the world. Elp de Wez, the local car park, uh, mountain bike routes, cyclocross routes, places I'd never take a road bike, I could create the route there, sync them up to the head unit, and get to work on the bike. That's pretty cool. So don't just limit yourself to these routes that you know, get creative and get riding. Now today I used the Wahoo ecosystem to ensure everything worked the first time and I wasted no time whatsoever. It did, it worked the first go. So I was using the Kicker 17 paired with the Wahoo Element. Now, I know a lot of people have the 520 from Garmin. I will do the similar routes and a similar video using the 520 of how to control your trainer and rewrite a route with an Edge 520. As for what trainer to use, as long as it's FEC compatible, let me know which one you'd like me to choose and I'll do a video on it. So we'll leave it there for today. Hopefully that sheds some light on how you can rewrite a route, well, on this one for now and this one coming soon. Enjoy your rides.